There are three types of molarity problems of which you need to be aware. Number one is the type in which you calculate molarity. The second type is when you use molarity as a conversion factor to calculate something else. And the third is a concentration dilution type of problem. So let us now consider one example of each of those. First, let's consider calculating molarity from data given. For example, what is the molarity of a solution made by adding 7.85 grams of methanol to enough water to bring the total volume to 153 milliliters? The molar mass of methanol is 32.04 grams per mole and the density of methanol is 0.792 grams per milliliter. What we have here then is 7.85 grams of methanol, which I will just abbreviate MEOH, and to that is added enough water to bring the total volume to 153 milliliters. What is the molarity? These types of problems are fairly easy to work so long as one recalls that the general setup for working a molarity problem is to express the answer as moles of solute, in this case our solute is methanol, over liters of solution. So, let's begin. Because our answer requires volume to be in the bottom, Let's begin by putting our known value in the bottom of the equation. Since that's a given value, I will place it under 1. Now I know my answer requires liters of solution in the denominator, so let me go ahead and convert that. I know there's 1,000 milliliters in 1 liter. At this point, I can see that I have the unit that I'm looking for in the denominator. I know that I have 7.85 grams of methanol. That is a given factor, so I will put it over 1. I put grams in the top because I know that I can convert grams to moles quite easily, and since moles is in the numerator, I decided to start by putting grams in the numerator. And it's a very easy conversion from grams to moles if I but know molar mass. The equation gave that the molar mass was 32.04 grams of methanol for every one mole of methanol. Now that I have this set up, let me confirm that I have the units that I want in the numerator. Grams crosses off. I'm left with moles of methanol in the numerator, and that's what I'm looking for. I have liters of solution in the denominator, and that's what I'm looking for. All other units have been canceled, so all I have to do at this point is to multiply out these numbers, and I will have my final answer. I need to divide 153 into 1, and I need to multiply that by 1,000, and I need to multiply that number by 7.85, and I need to then divide that number by 32.04, and the number I get is 1.6013, and it continues on but I only need to report to the proper number of significant figures, which in this case is going to be three. So this answer becomes 1.60 moles per liter. And since I'm at my final answer, I can replace moles per liter with an M for molar units. Let us now move to the second type of problem, which is using molarity as a conversion factor to calculate something else. And for consistency, let's use the same data and same materials as the previous question, 
only let's mix it up just a little bit. So here we go. How many grams of pure methanol is needed to make 153 milliliters of a 1.6 molar aqueous solution of methanol? The molar mass of methanol is 32.04 grams per milliliter. And the density of methanol is 0 0.792 grams per milliliter. So let's extract the data and see what we have. Well, one thing I notice is it starts me out with milliliters of solution. And I know I can convert milliliters to liters of solution. It also gives me molarity, which I know if I know liters of solution and molarity, I can use molarity as a conversion factor and determine from that moles of solute. If I know the molar mass of my solute, which was given in the equation, I know I can calculate grams of solute. And indeed, the question is asking me for grams of solute, and it's telling me how many milliliters of solution you probably recognize this as using a calculation grid type of approach. And indeed, that is one of the very easiest ways to solve problems in which molarity is used as a conversion factor. And so with this, it's a simple matter of setting up our dimensional analysis equation. How many grams of methanol do I get starting with 153 milliliters of solution? We can see from the graph that we want to first convert from milliliters to liters. So I know there are 1,000 milliliters for every liter of solution. The next thing I want to do is go from liters of solution to moles of solute. And I convert from liters to mole using molarity expressed as a conversion factor. And remember, it was given in the equation that we had a 1.60 molar solution. And so I'm going to write that, and this is the key to working these, to write this as a conversion factor. Moles of solute over liters of solution. This is the form of conversion factor that I'm going to use in my dimensional analysis equation. So I have 1.60 moles of methanol for every one liter of solution. And it was also given in the problem that the molar mass of methanol is 32.04 grams of methanol per mole. So let me do a little bit of accounting before I grab the calculator. Milliliter has crossed off, and I needed that to happen because milliliters is not in my answer. Liters canceled out. Moles of solute cancels out. And the only unit I'm left with is the only unit that I need. So now I'm ready to pick up the calculator and derive my final answer. To solve the problem, I start with the number 153 and divide that by the number 1,000. I then take that number and multiply it by 1.60. And that number is then multiplied by 32.04. And the answer I end up with is 7.843392. Reporting that to the proper number of significant figures, 7.84. 4 grams of methanol. Notice that in neither one of these cases did you need to use density. Density in this particular case was extraneous data. The third type of problem that we want to consider are concentration dilution problems. Remember, 
these types of problems are characterized by the fact that it is only the amount of solvent that changes. The amount of solute remains constant. As a result, the equation CV equals CV will always work. The concentration times the volume before a dilution or concentration is going to be equal to the final concentration times the final volume after the material is concentrated or diluted. A typical problem might look something like this. How many milliliters of 15.9 molar are concentrated? Nitric acid is needed to make 500 milliliters of 0.25 molar nitric acid solution. And how much water was actually added to the concentrate to make that final sample? We can recognize from the way the question is worded that all that is changing in this sample is that water is being added to a concentrate. So let's set it up. The first thing we notice is that the concentrations are in molarity and the volumes are given in milliliters. The initial or concentrated material is 15.9 molar. We do not know the milliliters of concentrate. The concentration of the final material is 0.25 molar and we said the final volume is 500 milliliters. It's now just a matter of solving this simple algebraic equation. Dividing both sides by 15.9 gives us milliliters of concentrate is equal to 0 0.250 times 500 divided by 15.9. Point nine. The answer to three significant figures is therefore 7.86 milliliters, and I will just put of concentrate. The second part of the question asks us how many milliliters of water is actually added. This is easy to calculate if one just realizes that the final volume minus the initial volume was obviously the amount of material that was either added or taken away. The volume final here is 500 milliliters. The volume that we're starting with is 7.86 milliliters of the concentrate and we get 492.14 milliliters of water that was added. To understand this problem, to illustrate the essence of this problem, let's look very quickly at what we did. Essentially, 7.86 milliliters of concentrate was added to a flask, and to that concentrate was added 492.1 milliliters of water, bringing the total volume of the sample to 500 milliliters. And so what now is in the flask winds up being 0.250 molar solution of nitric acid.